Hello my friends, welcome to Button Press Graphics. My name is Rob and today I'm going to be showing you the importance of using the path commands in Inkscape. The path commands for anyone who doesn't know or is new to this program is how you can manipulate and cut out pieces from the objects that you've already created. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now when you first start in Inkscape you will be presented with something that looks kind of like this. Now in order to do this we are going to need to go to File, Document Properties and set up our document. I always work with Pixels which is from this little drop down there notified by PX. So if you want to follow along at home you can do exactly that. Now by default I've left mine as 2000 by 2000. I just like working with a square canvas but you can alter that in any way that you want. Also you can change the border so you have a border on or off and you can change the colours of the background and the page if you so wish. But once you've got it set up in the same way then you can close out of that. Next. When you actually start with Inkscape, you might find it a lot easier if you open the Align and Distribute menu, which is right there, and if you open up the Fill and Stroke menu, which is right there. Once you have the menus opened up, they will appear on the right hand side, but you can forget them for now. Now first, what I'm going to start with is just a simple rectangle. You can select a rectangle by hitting the toolbar on the left hand side here that says create rectangles and squares. For this I'm going to just create a random square. Doesn't need to be perfect but if you want to make sure it's completely symmetrical then just hold shift and control at the same time while you're scaling it up. And as a rule of thumb, it's always good to have your opacity down to 50% or around 50% when you're working. And then you can turn your opacity up at the end of the project. It just makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Now we have this square, we can just simply go to path, object to path, and that will give us more options. If I was to undo that and then go to edit path by nodes, then you could see that there is just the two squares on either side and the circle. Now the circle is going to be controlling whether it's rounded corners or not and the path is just going to scale it as you did before. But when you go to path, object to path, then you get these four little nodes on each corner instead which allow you to move individual sections so of course when you make a mistake it's control and z or control and z and that will undo your latest action in order to navigate you can hold down the mouse wheel and just scroll with the mouse in order to move around or you can hold control and scroll in and out with the mouse wheel to zoom in and out now with that said we're going to create another shape now the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to show you what difference is. For a beginning we are going to create just another rectangle and if I do one that reaches completely over the square that we did originally like this so we've got the ends of this rectangle pointing out on either side. If we hold control and then select both oh sorry if we hold shift and select both objects just like that whichever shape is above is going to be the shape used to cut out a hole or a path inside the shape underneath so if we was to go to path difference as you can see it has now made this shape completely new with the path that we already put over the top cut out a shape from the path underneath this can also be used by if you make a square or a shape too large you can move this up and of course whatever the shape may be it is going to cut out exactly what you want when you go to path difference 
as you can see it's now made this square more of a rectangle so that is how the difference works next we're going to go and show you what exclusion will do exclusion is slightly different again if i was to select the rectangle and then the square behind it i go to exclusion and what that is going to do is take out whatever is overlapping and make it disappear leaving everything else so if i was to undo this as you can see because we've got the op opacity down the area in between where it's overlapping each time is what's going to disappear but the four pieces on either side are going to remain and finally if we was to do this all again but this time we use intersection it will do the exact opposite of the exclusion just like that now what that has done has taken the parts that are overlapping and left them and them alone but taken everything else away now there is just one other thing worth knowing you can grab both of these parts and once they are both selected you can union them together just like that and one more thing that i wanted to let you know if you go to select them all and then go to path and say exclusion again now you've got these four shapes but if you were to try and morph them or turn them or do anything like that you will see they all act as one shape in order to get them all separate you can do so simply by going to path break apart and now if we click off everything you can see that each piece is its own individual piece and that is pretty much how you do it now in order to show you something there is a very simple way that you can use these tools to make something look very very professional for example if i was to take an ellipse which you can find on the left toolbar and i was to draw a circle path object to path again this will have the four nodes in order to allow you to manipulate it in whichever way you want but say you wanted to cut out some text from the middle of this circle well that is fairly simple to do you go to the text tool click anywhere on the canvas and then i will just put example and then we are going to go to the text editor tool up here which is on the top toolbar so once you have clicked that it will open up this menu there we go i'm just going to select a random font click apply in order to apply it now at the moment this is still a text object it is not a path so in order to convert it into a path we go to path object to path then if we go back to the select tool we can increase the size i'm holding shift and control to make sure it scales correctly otherwise it will sh it will just scale irrelevant to wherever i am moving the mouse now if i was to do this let's put it in the middle just make it a little bit lower and then if i was to select both at the same time go to the align and distribute menu make sure last selected is done from the drop down and then i can center it up on the horizontal and vertical axis and that will give us the font right in the middle now we have got this as text but once we've gone to object to path we can ungroup it and then we can go to path union now it is one object it is all different shapes within that object so you can use the break apart if you want to make sure that you individually edit each of the letters but for now i'm just going to keep it as it is and then if i select the circle by holding shift and clicking on it now with both of them selected it is very very simple for me to go to path difference and there you go now if i was to put a circle of some description around the back and change the color and then if i was to select them all turn the opacity back up 
and then drop uh, just click off everything to deselect it and then click on the red circle drop it to the bottom using these commands at the top there you go and now when I select onto the black circle and I move it you can see it is completely one object now this can be used as well for a much better way of doing it and it can give you a very very good look to your text now for example I'm going to increase the size of this I'm going to get it roughly in the center I can move that circle out of the way now if I was to get any shape as long as it as it is a path I can scroll it along get a nice curve on it and then as long as I select them both go to the align and distribute and match it up on the vertical axis then if I click off everything to deselect it and then just click on the red circle while holding control it will lock it to the vertical axis so I can go up and if I try and go left and right it will go left and right but it won't go diagonally that's how you can lock it and make sure that it stays central now if say I was to put it there if you want to make sure it's perfect of course turn the opacity down now you see we have this area here now if I was to give a difference or an exclusion it would take away this object the word example so if I don't want that to happen I can simply make sure it's selected and then I can go right click duplicate that has now duplicated the word example and then while that's selected if I was to select on this red shape I can then go to path and intersection where the word example is overlapping with the red circle click that and now as you can see if I click off everything to deselect it you have now got a shape and if we take that away you can see it's actually a separate vector graphic which you can now put within the word and it gives it a nice little gradient sort of thing and you can actually use gradients on this so I would suggest just giving it a go because now you can see if I was to turn the text at the back say white you can see it but if I was to keep it black or even change it into a deeper shade of blue doing things like that you can see the effect that these simple tools can make and once you have learned these tools the amount of things you can do with it when you utilize them correctly is mind-boggling and there is really nothing that you cannot make so that's it for today my friends thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you have any questions do not hesitate to put them in the comment section down below if you want to download inkscape i will leave a link to that and if you want custom graphics that is what we do so get in contact and i will happily have a conversation about what you want but until next time thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one